Do, do you have a sense that the Chinese are, because I've had people in Alberta who care about these things, uh, which isn't every Alberta, uh, <laughs> and I spend a lot of time there, so I, I can speak with authority on that. Um, th but there are, are Albertans who think that, in fact, well, the, there's a kind of feeling that we will develop the technology and implement it, that in fact the Chinese are going to do that. Yeah, the Chinese are going to do it, but not alone. Um, the situation in China at the moment is one where the country simply cannot get enough electricity. Factories in China live with perennial brownouts, you know, and the government is struggling to just provision those, those, uh, those businesses with enough electricity. Um, and letting China carry the whole burden of that, I think, is just wrong. We actually have to work globally and collaboratively to solve that problem. It's so enormous. So uh, the, I know that the Obama administration has just announced a $10 billion investment in carbon capture and storage. The Australian government's putting several billion dollars into it. Industry's putting a billion. They should be putting far more in. And it'd be great to see Canada collaborate on those, those really important projects, I think, rather than do the sort of stuff that's been announced today. Uh, of course, there are alternative energy sources beyond coal. Uh, there was a paper published in the journal Science in the last few months showing that, in fact, all of the uh, American energy needs, actually 16 times, all the energy needs in America could be, uh, could be uh, generated by wind turbines on the continental U.S. Yeah. So where does wind, I mean, those figures are kind of stunning, so where, where does wind, what role does it play in the total energy picture going forward? Well, the real answer to the question is it depends upon the electric car. And I know that sounds a bit weird, but the trouble with wind energy is it's intermittent. Now, the more broad you have your wind turbine spread, of course, the less intermittent it is because while the wind may not be blowing in Kansas, it might be blowing in Manitoba, you know, and, and so you can have some electricity through the system. But the key to the, the widespread deployment of the intermittent sources of power, such as salt, photovoltaics and wind, is some storage capacity. And um, electric cars, electric vehicles offer that storage capacity because the model that's being developed now is one of a smart grid technology that allows the cars to be um, charged with that crashing the grid system, but also to allow the borrowing back from car batteries that are plugged in overnight or at times of high demand back into the system so you can store some of that intermittent capacity. And it's for this reason that some of the big wind energy pioneers such as Dong Energy in Denmark are partnering up with electric car uh, uh, utility uh, people such as Project Better Place 